My name is Sarah Tolman, and I'm presenting Epaxos Revisited, which I worked on with Sojin Park and John Osterhout. The overall problem guiding our work is that traditional consensus is slow when used in a wide area network, taking two wide area round trip times to complete an operation. There are a number of protocols that reduce latency for many operations to one RTT by having them take a fast path, but these typically don't work well in a WAN because a large enough percentage of operations takes the slow path or conflicts to mitigate the benefits gained from the fast path. An exception to this is egalitarian Paxos or Epaxos, which is a fast path consensus protocol that claims to achieve low WAN latency. While reproducing the Epaxos results, we concluded that the original benchmarking approach did not fully capture the cost of conflicts. And we developed a modified evaluation approach to address this. Secondly, we developed a method that we call timestamp ordered queuing or talk, which leverages synchronized clocks to reduce conflicts for fast path protocols. Our Epaxos results were more nuanced than those of the original evaluation. While we confirmed that Epaxos achieves low median latency, we saw huge variance in performance across the workloads that we tested, and we measured high tail latencies, sometimes more than four times worse than traditional multi Paxos. We also measured that talk is effective at reducing conflicts, reducing conflict by 50 to 100% depending on the workload, and reducing mean latency by up to 7.5% for high conflict workloads. As I've mentioned, Traditional approaches to consensus like Raft or Multipaxos are slow when used in a wide area network, taking two WAN round trip times to complete an operation. The first RTT is between the client and the stable leader to communicate the operation and its result. The second is for the leader to durably replicate the operation so that it can survive failures. An important function of the leader is to ensure that all replicas end up in a consistent state by ordering non-commutative operations before they're replicated. Epaxos is a consensus protocol that aims to achieve low latency in a WAN. It does this by converting one of the wide area round trips to a local area round trip. Epaxos removes the stable leader, allowing clients to communicate with local replicas and making it so that the only WAN RTT is for replication. To compensate for the lack of stable leader, Epaxos assigns a second purpose to the WAN RTT. Like traditional protocols, the WAN RTT is used to make the operation durable. In Epaxos, it is also used to collect operation dependencies, which are the operations that a replica is aware of for which execution order matters with respect to the current operation. Dependencies ensure that all replicas are consistent, executing interfering operations in the same order. When a client wants to commit an operation, it will issue the operation to its nearest replica, which will send out the operation to the other replicas. A quorum of replicas, which in this case is two of the other four nodes, will respond with the dependencies that they know about. In this case, this is the first operation in the system, so the quorum agrees that the operation has no dependencies, and it commits in one WAN RTT. Now, let's say that there's a second client which issues an operation that reaches replica B, but not replica C. In this case, B will respond that the operation has a dependency and C will respond that it has none. To resolve the conflict, the originator will replicate the union of the return dependencies, which will take an additional WAN RTT before it can commit. I've been using the word commit, so let me define it more precisely. The definition of a commit in Epaxos is different from the traditional definition. For multi-Paxos, a committed operation is durable, fully ordered, and ready to execute. At commit time, we can determine the result of the operation, and that result is typically returned to the client. For Epaxos, a commit means that the operation is durable, its dependencies can survive a crash, and it will execute but we can't necessarily compute operation ordering at commit time. The original Epaxos evaluation reported commit latency, but this is insufficient if the client needs to know an operation's result. So what needs to happen between Epaxos commit time and execution? 
To determine the ordering of an operation, the operation's dependencies must have committed. And this notification might come later than the operation's own commit. Once all dependencies have committed, we can traverse the dependency graph to determine the ordering of operations, which all replicas can do independently without further communication. Once the ordering is determined, we can execute. We reproduce the original Paxos results, confirming that Paxos achieves optimal median commit latency. However, we concluded that the original evaluation did not fully exercise the protocol's response to conflicts, and we developed a revised experimental methodology that we believe does. For example, the original evaluation measured commit latency. Commit latency is only meaningful for operations that don't return a result, such as blind writes. Our paper argues that for most writes and all reads, the client needs the result, and so we must measure execution latency. This table shows the changes we made to the originally Paxos benchmarking setup. I won't have time to cover all of them, but I do want to highlight a few. First, the original evaluation used a single hot key in a key value store for interference, issuing all operations on unique keys except for a fixed percentage. For our experiments, we used a Zipfian distribution to determine the keys on which operations were issued. Furthermore, the original evaluation used three hot key fractions for their workloads, 0%, 2%, or 100% of operations on that particular key. Because no one workload is going to give us a representative picture of how ePaxos performs for all applications, we ran experiments with 99 different access patterns, hoping to represent the range of practical applications that ePaxos might be used for. Lastly, we captured our latency measurements with the system at about 80% throughput, since low load minimizes opportunities for operation interference. A primary conclusion from our results is that performance varies greatly by workload. Each column of these graphs corresponds to a different node in a five replica cluster. The x-axis represents the percentage of operations that are mutating, and the y-axis measures the degree of locality. Workloads in the upper right corner are more likely to experience interference. In the top row, darker colors correspond to higher conflict rates. Conflict rate tells us how common it is for an operation to take at least two wide area round trips to complete. We see that, depending on the workload, anywhere from zero to 35% of operations will conflict. In the bottom two rows, Blue shows workloads where ePaxos is better, and red shows where it is worse. In most cases, ePaxos mean latency is better than that of multi-Paxos, but ePaxos 99th percentile latency is usually worse than multi-Paxos, and can be significantly worse. We've seen that conflicts can negatively impact latency. So what can we do to reduce them? We came up with a method called timestamp ordered queuing, or TOC which imposes intentional delays on the processing of some messages to improve consistency. And we use synchronized clocks to implement this. To get the intuition for talk, let's recall why conflicts occur. In this example, replica B receives a request from replica A. Because this is the first operation B is seeing, B believes the operation has no dependencies. However, by the time A's message reaches replica C, it is the second operation C has received, and C believes it does have a dependency, causing a conflict. The problem here is that replicas B and C process the messages in different orders. To correct this, we can have each replica delay processing requests until the time that the last replica receives it. Our goal is to reduce conflicts by having replicas process messages at the same time. Each message's processing time must be far enough in the future that all replicas would have received the message. To predict that time, we continuously measure the one-way delays between each replica, and we use synchronized clocks to make sure timestamps are meaningful across replicas. Unfortunately, the most consistent version of talk increases best-case latency. Without talk, we only have to wait for responses from nodes in the quorum. With talk, we have to wait for all of the nodes to receive the message, which increases best case operation latency. 
In the example above, talk added 61 milliseconds. We considered a few alternatives to mitigate the latency increase from talk. The first is to sync only to the quorum. This adds no additional latency, but reopens opportunities for conflict. Our paper describes a third option called quorum union, which provides a balance between latency and consistency. Our results show that talk significantly reduces conflict rates. In this graph, each column corresponds to one of the sync groups described on the previous slide. With just the quorum sync group, we see a minimum of 50% decrease in conflicts, which corresponds to an up to 7.5% decrease in mean latency. With the quorum union, we saw at least 85% reduction in conflict and up to 14% decrease in mean latency. But one location had a 24% increase in best case latency. We were able to completely eliminate conflict when syncing to all replicas, but this caused a prohibitive increase in best case latency. Finally, I wanted to highlight some other topics that are covered in the paper. One of them is that originally Paxo suffered from the potential for unbounded execution delays or even live lock. And we came up with a solution that bounds execution delay to about three WAN RTTs. To recap, our reevaluation of Epaxos found that the original did not trigger or measure worst case conflict behavior. With our modified experimental methodology, we confirmed that Epaxos reduces median latency, but we measured worse tail latency than previously reported. Finally, we demonstrated how to use synchronized clocks to reduce conflict rate. And we think talk might be generalizable to other fast path protocols as well. Thank you.